Would Kmart be shocked if Derrick Henry and the Ravens go to the Super Bowl? You know what, damn it, yes, I'd be shocked. You know why? Because last year, I was, all, I was a believer in Baltimore. They were my preseason Super Bowl pick, and I was so disappointed in the fact that they forgot how to do what they do best, which is run the football at the most important point of the season. So I'm not, you know what, you didn't want to put the push the panic button, D. Wood, on the Cowboys, free agency moves, who cares? You know, good teams are making splashy moves. Okay, I'm going to sit back. I'm not crowning them yet. No, I got to see it. Do we agree with that? I mean, maybe I misunderstand the definition of the word shocked. Like, you can say maybe I don't think they will, but shocked. Do you not think they will? I think they will be. Me like, too. they were my pick last year. They, I, well, we'll see. Maybe what I'm just a year early. Maybe, maybe I was we'll a year see, early we'll on the Baltimore Ravens. We'll see what the rest of the moves they have and how we go up to the season, but they were the best team, I think, in all of football last year. The fact that they lost the game against a very good team and forgot how to run the ball doesn't suggest to me that they're all of a sudden a bad team. And if the issue that you had well, well, with them was right. they forgot to run the ball, you know how it's going to be hard to forget to run the ball when you got a yes. shadow cast yes. over your shoulder <laughs> of a big man named Derek. Derek Henry. Yeah. Like, yeah, they're going to get that man talk the ball. They, they won't forget again. D. Wood, talk to me about what Derek Henry does for your offense. They are a team, and look, can we just feast our eyes again? No. Stop, Stop that. Stop it. Josh Norman is a great that human. Love Josh count. Norman. My favorite play ever. It's not a play. That, that oh, oh. His legs in the air. I, I, I so love that. I hate it. I, I've <laughs> always <laughs> envisioned it. That's what it would look like if I tried to play. <laughs> I would just be flying through the air like that oh, against my will. It anyway, hurts. It hurts. talk to me about what this guy means. I mean, what, what does he bring? I, I think Derrick Henry is one of one. I, the last guy that I remember like him was Earl Campbell. I mean, this guy's faster. Uh, what, what, what does he mean to that offense? Tone setter. Like a tone setter. Like, I, I think, like, listen, we talk about – uh, Baltimore Ravens forgetting to run the football in the in, you know in the playoff game against Kansas City. You're not going to do that with Derrick Henry. And then once you get close to the goal line, Green, I'm trying to tell you, man. When you get to the third or fourth quarter, people guys. get tired of hitting the guy that's, that's six it. three, six four, two hundred and fifty pounds. Like you just get tired of hitting guys like that. As the game progresses, so that's what you quarters. get with, De- with Derrick Henry. It's I also think that it, it, it's protection for um, Lamar Jackson. Yeah, yeah. And I think Lamar is not going to have to take as many hits. He's one of the quarterbacks who ran the ball a lot and has been hit the most early in his career. So I think this will help him a lot. And I, I think it does kind of. He's one of those guys where I think this is important when you're building teams is you bring in veteran guys who also haven't won. Hungry guys, right. like who have the respect of everybody in the locker room before they show up, and whose mind is made up on one thing. I promise you, Derrick Henry Super Bowl. wants to win a Super Bowl. Right. Derrick Henry wants to make an impact, and Derrick Henry's personality fits in really well with a violent, bully-type atmosphere that you get out of. The and race. I so wish I had thought of this yesterday when Ryan Clark was downplaying, poo-pooing, if you will, the significance of this move because he said the Ravens have always been good at running the yeah. ball. Do you know who's been good at running the ball? Derrick Henry. Their quarterback (laughs) has been good at running the ball. Suddenly they don't need that. Do you know who their Baltimore Ravens leading rusher was last year? His name is Lamar Jackson. Right. Lamar Jackson led that team in rushing with 821 yards last year. So if you're telling me that the acquisition of Derrick Henry, they remain just as good a running team, if not better, but suddenly my quarterback is getting hit, 25% 25% of the time that he has been up till now, that's a difference maker. I love the move of adding Derrick Henry to the offense. My question is, they did lose their DC, right? Yeah. They did have a lot of free agents that they had to figure out. They lost Patrick Queen. I understand Roquan Smith is a dog. But there are other questions beyond just, hey, they, they yeah. improved their, their yeah. running game. So that – so – Let's not act like, you know. Oh, no, it's not outrageous to think that their defense will take a step back from what they were last year. And I think that they can because they re-signed Matabike, who's incredible. He's probably one of the best young defense tackles. This team is still going to be good. The question was, would you be shocked if they were in the AFC championship? Because you know why? They also No, they also, who else is in the AFC? Okay, but right. would you be so, shocked if they got back? No, you wouldn't be shocked. Here's the thing. If you just landed from another planet and watched that game against Kansas City last year, you would emerge saying the Ravens were the better team. They just didn't win. 
They, they made a bunch of big mistakes. Yes. Kansas City had a great they first won. half. Mm -hmm. And then there's that fumble on the yep. one-yard right. line. Mm -hmm. I mean, they yep. had that game won like five different ways. Give credit to Mahomes and right. those guys. They yeah. found a way to win. We're discounting the Ravens based on one bad half. Exactly. That they this played even first year. psychology, Greeny. Oh, last year, all in on the Ravens. Now I'm back. No, no, I understand. You're interpreting the question to mean, is that your pick? And that's yeah. fine. I get it. I'm saying they are my pick. Yeah, I, I mean, think Derrick Henry is that much of a difference. Even if you would argue that they were, they did, they weren't the better team in that game, they weren't significantly worse. You don't walk away from that game saying they can't beat them. No, they could beat them. What is going on with Justin <laughs> Fields? I mean, why? Where are they now? I think there are a lot of factors. One is how teams evaluate Justin Fields. Some few years ago, teams weren't sure about could he be our guy, whatever. Then you also have the compensation piece, which is the bigger issue. I've talked to a lot of execs lately, two in particular this week. One said the longer we play the game of chicken with the Bears, the, the cheaper he becomes. Last night, I had an exec say, you know what? The situation that Ryan Poles, their GM, is in, it would make sense to keep Caleb and Justin in the same quarterback room. Now, I do not agree with that but I'm not a football guy. And I talked to football guys who said in front offices. Now, I think that would be crazy from a chemistry standpoint, from a Justin Fields perspective of, hey, we want to do right by Justin Fields. Well, putting him in the same room with Caleb Williams, that's not the right thing. But these are execs who are looking at a former first round pick wanting high compensation for him and not wanting to settle for what the rest of the teams want to give them. Let's have a little fun. Let's do a psychological experiment. You majored in psych at I Wesleyan. So, so let me have a little fun with my two football players here, okay? I think we all agree that is fraught with peril. The idea of having <laughs> Justin Fields and Caleb Williams together. But let's actually, let, let's live in a world where they do it. What exactly happens? Like, what yeah. is it, that, like, if we're observing this, what is it that goes so wrong that makes it impossible that the two could coexist, legitimately compete, one of them wins the job, the other one is the backup, and then we just sort of keep going from there? I think the, the um, roles need to be clearly defined. I don't think we need to have no legitimate competition. Like, we drafted someone number one overall. Justin Fields, you are here now to be the backup and to be trade bait and waiting. I think it can work. I just don't understand the reason to try it because you want to get a couple extra picks because it could also not work. And uh, my friend and your friend, Bomani Jones, texted me earlier and called me out and said, we have seen this work before, and he pointed to Drew Brees and Phillip Rivers. Right. I, I think that that's a possible thing to point to, but we haven't seen it tried very often, which doesn't mean it can't work, but why are we risking it? And I, I think for what? We're risking the possibility that these personalities clash in a locker room or the messages are unclear so that we can go from having a six round pick to a second round pick. I don't want to do anything that's going to impede the progress of Caleb Williams. That's all I care about. It's also not just the chemistry in that QB room. Think about the DJ Moore. Their number one wide receiver has already said, Justin's my guy. He's already said, these draft picks, they have nothing on Justin. That is also part of the situation that I would not want. Go get, you, all, go get you an old quarterback who's done this before and understands what his job is. A bridge backup. quarterback. Yeah. yeah. I mean, not even a bridge quarterback. An old dude to give him some, bring him up on game and sit in the background and understand you aren't going to play in a Right. Or, or maybe even let him sit the first few games. Yeah, or that season, works too. If that's what you think is in his best interest. I understand. To Bamana's point, it's interesting. I don't know that we'll ever know. I'm trying to remember yeah, all yeah. the details. If Breeze hadn't gotten hurt, yeah. I don't know how that would yeah. have ultimately yeah. played out. That's a fair yeah. point. What, what do you think? I just think that, for, number one, it's just hard to manage expectations. When you got two young guys, like, you, Justin Fields still expects to Try to be a starter in this yeah, league. How right. do you? How do you? Like, how do you manage that? You bring talk, in, yeah. you, you draft a guy number one overall. You you want to get him on the field, getting as much you know practice and reps as, as possible. Then you got Justin Fields, who's been the starter in Chicago. How does he manage that? You know, I always say the quarterback room is the most delicate room in the in the building. And now you got two guys who who are basically alphas who want to be the starting quarterback. I just don't know how that's going to work. So, so we asked uh, each of us, where would you like to see Justin wind up? What, what's the best spot for it? And let's put the picks 
on the screen here. Nick, go ahead. What, what did you uh, say? Where I mean, would you uh, like to you see asked me yesterday. It was before the uh, Colts <laughs> went and got Joe Flacco. But okay. I was thinking get him with Shane Steichen. Yeah. Back up uh, Richardson, who has an injury history. He's uh, Shane Steichen's proven that he knows how to have success. Not only knows how to success, have success with um, athletic quarterbacks, but he wanted Hurts. He wanted Richardson. Get him there as a potential backup to Richardson and maybe even the long-term starter if Richardson can't stay healthy. D. Wood. Yeah, I had uh, I had the New York Giants. Yeah, with, with Brian Dayball. I just think I just go back to the work that Brian Dayball had with Josh Allen in Buffalo, and I just think that you know for Justin, it's all about getting this a uh, place to a coach that knows how to develop quarterback. Brian Dayball knows how to develop quarterback, so I I know I think they signed Drew Locke, but who cares? Like wow, you know, like break, like no no disrespect to Drew Locke. Yeah. Shout out, but I just think <laughs> yeah. that get, get but you know just getting with Brian Dayball, I think will be good for him. So, interestingly enough, the Giants were one of the teams that I had said. The other was the Seattle Seahawks. Because what I want from Justin is to either be with a offensive head, offensive-minded head coach or OC who's giving him a situation where he can still learn, flourish, sit behind somebody. Yeah. Right now, Geno Smith is there in Seattle, but he's oh. not going to be the long-term answer. Now, the, now, they have a new head coach in, in Mike McDonald, and they have a first-time OC, but mm -hmm. it was Michael Penix's former college coach in Washington. So I feel like Justin would be in a situation where he's far away from the spotlight. He could just chill, learn from the, Gino, yeah. and have I mean, that success. The thing, a thing I like about that is chill, learn from Gino, because Gino has been has on, a, been on a similar path, yeah. Yeah. a much more circuitous path, but he's come yeah. to his, a real respectable um, second contract, which is what Justin wants to get to at some point yeah. after having a really rough start, which is a And I'll say Minnesota. I don't know if the Bears would trade him there because he's in the division, but the reality is That's the he point, would yeah. walk in there as the best quarterback on the roster, and he's got Justin Jefferson to throw I've the seen, ball to. I mean, I've seen that type of stuff. I mean, listen, uh, Andy Reid traded Don McNabb hey. in the division.